Arthur, I have some bad news for you. <laughs> this is the last time we'll be meeting. You don't listen, do you? You just ask the same questions every week. How's your job? Are you having any negative thoughts? All I have are negative thoughts. Check out this beer glass. It's pretty cool, right? Ride or die, PA. I dig it. What's up guys, Spencer Zach right here. Today we are going to recreate a few scenes from the new Joker trailer. So I haven't done any recreations in a few videos. So I was really excited when the new Joker trailer came out. I thought it looked really awesome and this movie's just gonna probably be amazing. The reviews are, are really good so far. I got really excited about it and just thought I would recreate some shots from the trailer. So usually I'm trying to like review a camera or a light modifier or something and I usually do a recreation and kind of show what the camera can do in a practical scenario. Well this time I don't really have a reason to do that but I just wanted to recreate some shots from this trailer so bad that I decided just to do it. So when I started doing some research on the movie, it turns out that it was shot with the Alexa 65. So right off the bat, I knew I needed a full frame camera to shoot with. Um, usually I use the po Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K or my Ursa Mini, and those are both super 35 millimeter sensors. Well, the Pocket 4K, once you put a Metabones on it, is practically a super 35 millimeter sensor. Um, and so I wanted to shoot on a full frame camera and I have, I use the Canon EOS R for still, still photos. So I thought I would try to use that. Now it only does eight bit internally, um, and a do full frame, you have to shoot at 1080p, which doesn't really bother me so much. I mean, as long as I'm getting the full frame look, I'm fine with shooting at 1080p, especially for YouTube. I know that a lot of people like 4K, but for this for this purpose and recreating this, I think it won't really matter. Now I've shot on the Canon EOS R a little bit before. It has a really nice image, actually. The color science, you know, everyone touts online as being pretty amazing. And I, I tend to agree that the skin tones are really nice. Now there's not like a ton of latitude on this camera. Um, it really only feels like 12 stops of dynamic range. It may be more, maybe less, I'm not sure, but the log profile isn't perfect. Um, it's only eight bit color space, which is just a bummer. I really like to shoot on only things that are 10 bit and above. Um, that way you can, when you get into post, you can really push around the image and do what you want with it. Now I see a lot of people doing a lot of awesome things with the Canon EOS R, so I thought I'd give it a shot and see how it turned out. Plus the only trailer I could really get online was a pretty low resolution copy anyways. So I thought when I cut the eight bit 1080 into the trailer, it wasn't gonna be that much of a difference. So doing recreations of big budget Hollywood movies is not always easy, but I like to really show that off on this channel that it's possible to do that. You just have to kind of de-engineer a shot um, and see if you could use lights that you have available to you to, to kind of recreate that shot. So the first shot I decided to recreate was um, a shot of Joaquin Phoenix or Arthur or Joker, whoever you want to call him for this scenario. Um, and he's got a big clown shoe, big leather clown shoe, and he's clearly like tearing into it, loosening it up and kind of getting it ready for for his costume or whatever. So he kind of has his shirt off and he's hunched over a chair and he's pulling on this on this boot. So the first thing I noticed about this I needed to try to recreate was that, well, it looks like daylight. Now, when I went to shoot this, um, I, did, I did shoot it in daylight originally and I just didn't really like how the shot came out. So I waited for the sun to go down and I used the kind of lights outside my loft window to act as the same kind of color temperature of the background that they have in the original shot. They have like some windows in there and some highlights coming in, but I just use those lights in the background to kind of show the same look. So the first thing you'll notice is that on the back of his skin, he's got some nice soft light coming on his back. He's got some harsh light or some sunlight that is hitting his hair from this side. So I knew I needed two lights for that. I need one probably a lot closer um, that's really soft and that's like some wrap that's kind of acting like sunlight that's spilling around the room. And then one that's acting more as like direct light from the sun that's coming in and, and really separating him from the background. Something else to think about with this shot is that the, the tone. So he has a shirt off, so that's obviously his skin tones are there. And then he has the boot and everything is basically dark around him. It's like there's nothing, there's no lights on in the room or anything. He just has a little bit of sunlight coming into a really dark space. And that adds a very specific mood. And I thought it looked really nice. So I wanted to recreate this one and I knew I could inside my loft. So I uh, set up the Canon EOS R and I put on my vintage uh, Canon FD lens, the 55 millimeter 1.2. I've talked about my Canon FD lenses a little bit on this channel before. Um, I plan to do a video on how I converted those to EF mount and all that stuff coming up soon. I wanna buy the Canon FD 35 millimeter F2 at some point and when I do, I'll get the mount for that and I'll kind of show you guys how I convert these lenses. And so the first light I set up was the, uh, the, the kind of sunlight that's pinging his hair in the back of his head. So I use the Aperture 300D through um, the 
aperture spotlight mount. I just did a review over that mount um, in my last video, so go check that out if you haven't. It's a pretty awesome little modifier. It can really direct the light where you need to go. Um, actually, I directed it on my body and it was kind of spilling everywhere. That's what's really cool about this modifier is that you can cut the light where you need to. So I just cut it off my lens and I got rid of a flare really, really fast. That was a kind of cool thing that this uh, modifier can do. I didn't have it turned up very high. I mean, it's a pretty dark scene. So I think it probably had the 300D at like, I don't know, like, uh, 50 percent maybe and that's 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 edging my head there and then i took an aperture 120d with the light dome I didn't have it very bright either probably a 35 45 percent or something like that and i wrapped it around on the back side of my back and i got it pretty close and i kind of hung it um over the top of me um and then i just kind of dialed in each one of the the, the levels to kind of make it match right I and mean, i'm using the canon esr with the log profile and i'm shooting in full hd like i said but then i'm using the vlog assist on the back to light for this which is Pretty nice, I had the histogram, so I could tell that I was shooting a little dark, but I was able to see with the vlog assist how how the fall off is from each light and the levels. And so when I got it into the computer, I'd be in a pretty good spot already. So I'm sure a little bit of light was bouncing around the room. And so I have just enough fill on that. And I have just enough shape. So I have mostly a dark side facing the camera, which I'd like to have the dark side on the camera side anyways. And then I have the Aperture 120D over my back, really soft, nice light kind of wrapping around that light that's supposed to be motivated from the window. And then I have the Aperture 300D through the Aperture Spotlight, um, just kind of shooting the back of my head to kind of separate myself from the background. And thankfully my wife was around to do a nice little tilt on the tripod for me so I could get the same action that was in the trailer. And for the next shot in the trailer, I used the shot where he's laughing and he's kind of buttoning up his shirt and he's walking down a hallway. Now I didn't have a hallway like that. That was a pretty um, good set piece that they used. I mean, there's lots of nice tones and glass and fluorescent lights and stuff to really add a lot of layers and shape and depth to that shot. Now I didn't have that, but I did have access to an office that had a hallway that I could come around the corner with um, and kind of get a similar look. I had interior windows just like that one. Um, I didn't have any fluorescent tubes to just put in everywhere. Um, although I do want to buy some and make a video over those. Stay tuned for that. And so I kind of wanted to have a tungsten kind of orangey kind of background for the open opening bit of the shot and then I wanted to come into uh, an area that had more of the fluorescent look so a little bit more of the green look that they have going on um, in this shot. So uh, my friend and I went into the space and it was it was pretty difficult to add shape and take enough, take enough light away to make it look dark and rich like they did um, in their shot. Um, there's white walls everywhere, and you've heard me say this before, but white walls are a DP's worst enemy. I mean, you put up a light, it's going to bounce all over the place, and you're going to lose all that nice richness of these shadows. So we basically turned off all the lights, except we um, left one light one light bulb on in the hallway, and we basically just wrapped um, a cover from a 5-in-1 reflector around that and taped that up to kind of make it as a snoot. So they kind of made a pool of light that I could walk into when I'm walking down the hallway. And then we put up... Um, we didn't really have a nice big negative fill, so a rag for that. So we used um, uh, some 5-1 reflectors and a silk and stuff. We used that to fill up the whole hallway to make sure none of the sunlight was spilling on my face too much when I walked down the hallway. Now, it spilled on my face a little bit, but that was okay. We need a little bit of fill in the room so we weren't uh, completely underexposed. Um, then also we just took a lamp that was already in this office in the back corner and we just turn on that lamp and that adds a nice uh, tungsteny kind of effect behind me and I, so I kind of walk through the dark and kind of come out into the light and you can see my face when I stop my psychotic laugh. Luckily my friend was able to come with me and he brought his uh, glide cam with him so we put the Canon EOS R on the glide cam. It took a few tries, you know, operating a glide cam over a electronic gimbal is, is much harder. I didn't have access to a gimbal that day so we used the glide cam instead and it ended up working out pretty well. It took a few tries and you know he had to walk backwards and we had to find the right pace and I had to sync up my laugh with the actual trailer which was not easy either but I think we got something that kind of resembles the original shot. We actually used the new lens for the Canon EOS R, it's the 35mm 1.8. Um, it's an autofocus lens. It's a kind of a cheaper lens that they in their lineup for the R for the R mount, um, and to kind of make it look more vintagey, since I was using vintage glass in the other shots. Um, I put on my black Promis filter. You've heard me talk about it before if you've watched my other videos. It's just a nice softening filter. It kind of adds halation to your highlights and kind of lifts up your shadows a little bit, and it just gives it a more um, cinematic look. So the next few shots that I decided to recreate 
where it looks like it's a shot where he's talking to a social worker or he's talking to a therapist or something like that. Basically your classic over the shoulder setup. The first thing you'll notice is that it's very green in the shot and then he has a nice little key light, which is probably coming from like what they're trying to motivate as a lamp or something like that. So I did set up the shot and I decided to light it, but I only had daylight balance stuff. And so I just lit it, put it in the computer and I decided that the daylight balance really didn't sell the effect enough. If you can, if you go back and look at that shot pretty heavily, it really looks like they're using mixed color temperature. You'll notice a lot of people don't use mixed color temperature lighting in their shots, but it's something that can really help add depth and contrast to your shot without having to manipulate anything in post. And once I got the original daylight stuff into the computer, I tried to manipulate it to make it look contrasty in green and orange like they did in the original shot. And I just couldn't get it there, especially with that 8-bit codec that's inside the Canon EOS R. And so I decided to reshoot the whole thing, uh, which is fine. I just want to make something that's a better product for you guys so you can actually glean uh, real information from this. I knew I wanted to have a tungsten balanced light to have that nice orange glow on his face. So I used the Aperture 120D and I put the Aperture Spotlight mount on it. And what that allowed me to do was it allowed me to be able to put uh, gels on the light really easily and not have to worry about putting those gels inside their, their light dome because it's really not easy to do that. Um, and so I, I used the spotlight mount. I put some uh, uh, CTO, it's only like a quarter CTO, so I, I quadrupled it up to make it a full CTO to make that light really orange and closer to the tungsten white balance. Um, and then I shot that across the frame into a little white uh, bounce card and I used that as my key light. I used that basically as my lamp effect. So I put it out in front of me and I had the light bounce off of that and that kind of added a nice little warm wrap around my face. And then I just kind of let the light fall off in the background. Actually, I shot this in the middle of the day and I have these big loft windows and they were spilling light all over the room, even with the blinds up. So <laughs> I used a little uh, guerrilla tactic and I just put up a bunch of light stands, put as much black negative fill as I could to block off the sunlight. And I didn't quite get all of it, but I got enough to, re to make the shot look right and look proper. So now some of that key light probably bounced off the background and maybe there was still some daylight leaking in that was on the background. That was okay. I needed a little bit of reflection on the background so I can manipulate those colors and the contrast and post to get something that was accurate to the original shot. So I also shot this shot on the 55 millimeter Canon FD 1.2. Um, I shot it around between like two and two eight. Um, I didn't want it to be too shallow. The first time I shot it, it was just really too shallow. There's no reason to really shoot that shallow for narrative filmmaking. Um, the only really show that I've seen that's really that shallow and they use it really well is Euphoria. It's something I might actually do a video on in the future, but Euphoria, they use that Alexa LF, that Alexa 65, and they, they put lenses on there that are really shallow and they use it as a storytelling technique, but that's really not always needed. You wanna be able to see your actor's face, you wanna see them sharp, and you wanna be able to get the emotion out of them. And so sometimes going that shallow really kind of takes away from it. As much as I love it as a cinematographer, I love shallowed up the field. I think it really adds a unique look and I try to use it when I can for commercials and whatnot, but it's not something that's always necessary. So I stopped down my lens on this one a little bit to make sure that I could get my face all the way in focus. And then when I went to do the close-up of this same shot, it was a bit more difficult. I think they might've been using a longer lens, like an 85 millimeter lens or something. I didn't have one of those that would mount on this camera. Um, so what I did is I put the camera back into 4K, which actually cropped in on the sensor and punched in and it was almost perfect. I didn't have to move the camera very much at all. And it punched in and it got a very similar field of view as that what they used in the movie. Now, actually that's something that they might've done in the movie, who knows? They were shooting on the Alexa 65 at, was it like 4.5K or something like that. So they had the ability to punch in if they needed to, or maybe they used an 85 millimeter lens, I don't know. But I wanted to get a similar compression and I didn't have the right lens to do it. So I just problem solved and I punched in on 4K. Um, and I got the shot lined up basically how they had theirs. Um, the lighting all stayed the same. I didn't change anything. Um, the light was still the same on the key light. The only thing I did was just back up the chair a little bit to get the frame just right. And so there might've been a little bit less of a, a kick off the uh, key light, but basically for all intents and purposes, it was the same. And the last shot that I had to recreate was the one where he's in the kitchen. Now this one was pretty difficult too, because I didn't have the, the ability to have a light shoot up from the, from the outside into a window. And so I had to kind of just fake this color temperature. Now I happen to have a kitchen that has a long um, bar top with some fluorescent lights already under it. So that was the convenient part for this. Um, and those are probably balanced at like 2,800 Kelvin or something like that. And so I just tried to kind of balance in the middle um, of those two. And I had the tungsten lights that are outside of my loft that were kind of spilling all over the place. So basically I just took those two and I put some power windows on them and I just changed their hue and their color temperature to add that color contrast that they had in the original shot. You can see in the original shot, they're using fluorescent tubes, so they're probably using some professional tubes like quasars or um, kinos or something like that. But they have a really strong cyan color temperature coming off of them. Now, the odds are they probably had those cool and nice and blue on set 
and then they um, uh, had a gel or something else on their light outside to get that kind of nice tungsteny orange sodium vapor kind of look on the background. But like I said, I just had to do in, uh, in post and DaVinci Resolve, I had to kind of tweak those colors to, to get me something that was relatively close to that. I don't always recommend fixing it post. Actually, I recommend doing the opposite, like I did with the scene before that, where I actually used some gels to give it an orange glow on the face, rather than trying to push that around in post. Especially on an 8-bit camera, they re it really limits you on how far you can push it. You're not working with very much color there. Um, with a 10-bit or a 12-bit camera, you have a lot more colors you can push around, a lot more depth, and you can probably get something a little closer, but never rely on fix it in post. Um, always try to get it on set. And then on this one too, I was lucky again, my wife was able to kind of do a little handheld motion for me and push in on me while I'm standing there with my shirt off in the kitchen. Otherwise, I would have had to do like some sort of zoom effect in post to kind of get that myself. Now this one was shot pretty shallow. I think I really wanted to try to get a shallow depth of field on this one, and it shows on that vintage lens. It's pretty soft but it still looks pretty cool and I still think sells the same effect that they were kind of going for in the original shot. But I think it turned out pretty good. It looks pretty close to the original shot, but you can definitely tell that I'm shooting on a little bit of a cheaper camera in this one. So then it was a matter of getting all this footage and compiling it and putting it into the computer to add some of the color grade and tonality that they have in the trailer or the, the movie for the Joker. Um, you'll notice that most of the movie has a lot of kind of muted highlights and it has a lot of like kind of cyan-y kind of blue greens in the shadows. And then a lot of times they have some kind of warmth or contrast on his skin tones. Now this isn't a look that's like new by any means, but they definitely push it a little bit farther on this film to, to give that nice green kind of Joker feel. So it's pretty easy. I mean, once we got the, the once I got the files in the computer and I um, added my contrast back in and you know dip dip down a lot of the the image into a darker darker space. Um, then I was able to just kind of push the shadows a little bit cyan. On the scene where I'm talking to the therapist or the social worker, I selected my skin tones and I just pushed up the res just a little bit to kind of add a little bit more color contrast in that scene. And I even cooled down the image a little bit to get that kind of bluish green where I need it to be to match the original shots. So I, you know, I did a lot of work to try to get these colors where they needed to be to match the original trailer. And that made me think of you guys. I decided to actually make a LUT based on this trailer, based on this look, the Joker look, um, and give it to you guys for download so you guys could create a similar look for yourself if you wanted to, and not have to go through so much of the trouble I went through to find, this, find the colors just right and get the color temperature just right. So I decided to uh, build a LUT for you guys. So if you want to download that LUT and support the channel, you can uh, purchase that LUT in the description below. So I really like doing these recreations because they're a really good exercise um, and how to light and shoot something inside of some constraints. You know, you have something to model it off of and you're trying to find the same look and you're problem solving. And basically what you're doing on set when you're lighting is, is just a big game of problem solving. You're always trying to, you, you want to go in there with a plan, an idea of how you want something to look and you want to try to, you want to try to create that with the tools that you have. You want to try to figure out how you can do that. And that's all it is, just a big problem solving game. You're just trying to see what you can do to get the look that you're trying to convey. And that's not always easy, but um, that's why I like to do this. I like to, to do this exercise. It's my lighting brain working, and I'm trying to figure out ways of how I can get a similar look. It doesn't have to be the same way every time. You know, like however they lit that might be totally different than the way I lit it, but I lit it in, with the tools that I had at my disposal and I still made it work. And it just goes to show that what you can do with your own tools, um, that you can make something look amazing and really not spend that much money. I mean, Aperture 120D sure is five to $700, um, but you could use a lot of different lights to do that. I didn't light it very bright or anything. Um, and a piece of foam core, I mean, that just cost a few dollars at Walmart. This was a really fun one to recreate. I'm really excited about this movie. I think it's gonna be a different take on the superhero genre, maybe getting a little bit closer to the Christopher Nolan Dark Knight series, which really excites me. Let me know if you have any more questions on how I did the lighting in this, or if there was something that stood out to you that I didn't talk about and you would like to uh, ask me about it, feel free to do that. You can let me know in the comments below. Definitely let me know what other uh, movies you want me to recreate in the future. Uh, a lot of people have dropped comments before what they want me to do, and I'll try to do those. It's not always easy to do um, all these recreations because I don't have like spaceships and sets like that available to me available to me all the time. So throw me a bone, suggest something that you think I could actually pull off in reality, and I will try to do that in the future. Um, uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. And until next time, guys, I'm Spencer Sakurai. See ya.